Hey gardeners, you're watching Country Garden Girl and I'm Bobby. Wanted to talk with you for a few moments about uh, an annual that I'm growing this year, Cherry Brandy Rudbeckia, and it's right behind me. And I'm also growing Sahara Rudbeckia, and I have that in another spot, but we'll talk about the Cherry Brandy for now. I ordered these seeds from Johnny Seeds, and Johnny Seeds is not, uh, Johnny Selected Seeds, is not sponsoring this video. I don't work for them in any way. But um, I really like this company because they put all kinds of information on the back of the seed pack. It's very, uh, makes it very easy. Then it just tells you everything you need to know. So this Cherry Brandy Rudbeckia, I'm in a zone 6B, but it's actually a tender perennial for those of you who are in zones 9 and 10. So, um, you know, it would come back for you. It won't come back for me. It makes a really great cut flower. Uh, because it lasts a long time in the vase. The pollinators just love it, as you'll see. I'll show you. I'll take the camera off and show you in a moment. But you could, um, I sowed these indoors under grow lights, uh, started them around March, and I l prefer that method because, you know, the tender seedlings, the slugs, and just all kinds of bug pressure like those tender seedlings, but you can direct sow them and you would do that like two weeks before your last frost. And uh, I've got bees flying everywhere if you see me jumping a little bit. Um, but you can sow them two weeks before your last frost. You can direct sow them. But like I said, I prefer to sow them. And I have a very simple grow light system in my office. So um, I prefer to start them that way. But I am really enjoying having these. And again, if you've never purchased from Johnny Seeds, Johnny Selected Seeds, then you really want to give them uh, a thought because it's a great company as far as, you know, on time and they always have a good selection and uh, very timely that they send out their seeds. So uh, with that said, let me take the camera off and switch it around and we'll take a closer look at these uh, cherry brandied root cherry brandy rudbeckia yeah, that's kind of hard to say so here's the drift and i just have them in a raised bed and you can see that i've got straw flowers in this raised bed i have uh, that's a zinnia that uh, self-seeded itself right next to the raised bed but there's also dahlias some i grew from seeds some i grew from tubers but here's um let me move here so we can not be the it's early morning and the sun is bright here so here's the drift of the cherry brandy. And I'm just loving the colors because I'm just so ready for fall. I'm trying not to rush the seasons, but, ah, oh, hummingbird. Anyway, so uh, when you cut these and when you want to cut these for a vase, they say the best time to cut them is just before um, they're starting, just when they're starting to open, just bump the camera. Let's see if we can zoom in. See that one there? Maybe that might be a good time to cut it, to harvest it for your vase because they will open up in the vase. But I actually, I have not gone by that rule. <laughs> I just cut them when they're not too spent. And oh gosh, I have to just walk over here to these butterflies. If you've been with me for any time, guys, you know that butterflies just draw me in. These are the Benares giant zinnias. And in my part of the country, I say zinnias. And I probably should say zinnia. That's the proper way, but I'm the zinnia girl. So, all right, back to the cherry brandy rudbeckia. So, um, just the only pest pressure that I've noticed on these, a little bit of earwig, maybe eating off some of the petals, but as you can see, they're, you know, they haven't really been bothered. Now, I have noticed the spittle bug on uh, my Sahara Rudbeckia, but I spray them with neem oil, the 100% the cold pressed neem oil mixed with Castile soap and water, and it's an organic spray or you can just give them a good blast with your hose and they'll, they'll come right off. It's a teeny little bug that surrounds itself with what looks to be soap suds or spit and it's called the spittle bug. And they really don't do a lot of damage. They just sort of, um, you know, eat on your sap of your stem a little bit, but they don't really damage it. 
Well, I hope you'll consider growing some of this uh, Sahara or and cherry brandy rudbeckia in your garden, uh, rudbeckia herta. That is the botanical name. There's also uh, prairie sun rudbeckia. I'm going to start some of that next year. And like I said, I did start these about six weeks before my last frost indoors. And then I usually wait a couple weeks uh, after the last frost date has passed to to plant my um, to plant my seedlings outside. So after I've hardened them off, but I think you'll enjoy growing these and having these in your garden that um, just wonderful cut flowers and give you that little different feel from your pinks and your purples of summer and bring you into the fall. All right, well, if you haven't already subscribed, please do and give this video a thumbs up. And I'm still trying to grow this YouTube channel and I really appreciate your support. Share with your friends if you would do that. I would be so appreciative. And uh, so I hope you're enjoying your garden and have a great day. Happy gardening and thanks for watching.